why have the Bill Belichick to the Falcons rumors gone so cold over the last couple of days? Well, we're going to break it all down on today's show as ESPN dropped a pretty juicy article, I'd say, filled with nuggets and tidbits as to what is going on across the NFL with all the head coaching searches. Have He had seven openings at our peak, and now there are only three vacancies, the Falcons, the Seahawks, and the Commanders. So we're going to talk about where everyone is going to end up when it's all done. But before we get into today's show, into more detail, we had an awesome meeting here at Chat Sports where I was given the green light to do a live Falcon show, which is a great opportunity to be interactive with the audience. But the only contingent is we have to get to 18,300 subscribers. That's what my boss has said in my meeting with them yesterday. We're at 18,221. So I have full confidence that we can pick up Less than 80 subscribers by this time next week. But if you are on the fence about joining the channel, please consider doing so. That way we can get a live Falcons Today show going every single Thursday for the offseason. Now, let's talk about Bill Belichick coming to the Falcons and why things have come to a halt. Because a week, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, it seemed like it was a foregone conclusion. Belichick was going to come to Atlanta He has only interviewed with the Falcons. Arthur Blank wanted a home run hire. He wanted a big-name ticket. That is Bill Belichick. But over the last week, we have seen the Falcons conduct several second interviews, and we haven't heard a whole lot about the latest on Bill coming down to ATL after his second interview. Well, Dan Graziano from ESPN had this to say in an article today. As of Wednesday evening, my understanding is that Belichick to the Falcons remains a possibility Perhaps even the most likely scenario. There are hurdles to clear, though, in terms of what the organizational structure would look like under Belichick. Longtime Falcons team president Rich McKay is a very powerful figure in that organization and a trusted lieutenant of team owner Arthur Blank. His role likely would be reduced if Belichick comes to town. And there's also a feeling that Belichick would bring a lot of his own people for positions up and down the organization. So as you would imagine, there's pushback from people in the building whose jobs might be negatively impacted. I still believe that Arthur Blank is going to hire Bill Belichick, but I think that pushback maybe drives Arthur Blank to do a full thorough search, right? Top to bottom, leave no stone unturned, and if they land on Bill Belichick and people lose their jobs, I think Arthur Blank can maybe sleep a little bit better at night, knowing, well, we did a full thorough search, and ultimately we landed where we began, which was we wanted Bill Belichick. But at the same time, Arthur Blank, you're the fucking owner. Hire whoever you want. Are you really letting front office people and Flowery Branch bully you and pressure you into not hiring the head coach you want because they might be out of a job? Like, this is the National Football League. Everyone has lost a job at some point. Everyone has gotten fired at some point. Bill Belichick won six Super Bowls, and he got fired. This is just the business. I think Arthur Smith, on his way out of Atlanta, did a great job of recognizing in all of his last press conferences when asked about his future in ATL, saying, hey, I got into this business knowing that you're probably going to get fired at some point. And if you don't like that, this is not the job to be in. So, Arthur Blank, if Bill Belichick is your guy, I sure hope that you are not going to make a head coaching decision based on Rich McKay and Terry Fontenot and the rest of the upper echelon management and brass in Atlanta going, please don't hire Bill. We don't want to see reduced roles. That should not be a factor into whether or not you want to hire a head coach, right? If you don't want to hire a head coach because you like where everyone is right now, okay, I can get behind that. But if you're not going to hire a guy simply because there is pressure in the building, from people that are beneath you, Arthur, you own the freaking team, dude. Just hire whoever you want to hire. That's the beautiful point of being an NFL owner. That's the dream. Make enough money so you can be an NFL owner and meddle with the team as much or as little as you like, but at least you have the option to play Madden in real life. I just, I don't understand how this head coaching hire could be held up because people beneath the owner are begging them not to hire someone that could bring in someone to replace them. That just seems like a bad way to go about a hire in general. Now, let's just run through the other interviews the Falcons have conducted so far. How about me yesterday, by the way? Filming a video talking about Jim Harbaugh for about a third of it saying, 
I feel like he's going to get fired in the next uh, hired in the next hour or so, and then 30 minutes later, he's hired by the Chargers. Uh, we have Belichick, who's gotten two interviews. Mike Vrabel has gotten one interview. Ben Johnson is going to get a second interview after this weekend slate of games. Bobby Slowick has a second interview going on right now. Brian Callahan is hired, but was hired by the Titans. Joe Brady and Brian Johnson only got one interview. Second interviews on the defensive side, Ejero Evero and Raheem Morris were both in-person external minority interviews, which means Atlanta has complied with the Rooney rule, so they could hire anyone at any given moment. But they do plan on talking to Mike McDonald, Aaron Glenn, and Anthony Weaver, who are all coaching this weekend. So my big thing here is, if you fired Arthur Smith to go get a butts-in-seats kind of coach, right, whether it's Bill Belichick or Mike Vrabel, why would you then turn around and hire Arthur Smith 2.0? And I understand every coach is different, but to me that just doesn't make sense. Why would Arthur Blank fire Arthur Smith, a coach he liked, by the way, right? It wasn't like they had a bad relationship. He stood by Arthur Smith for a long time. But then at the end, I think he decided, I'm tired of being a bit of a poverty franchise in the NFL for the last three or four seasons. They were one of two teams to not play a single primetime game last year. So I just can't connect the dots of fire Arthur Smith so you can go get a big-name coach, and then you land on Anthony Weaver or Mike McDonald. Like, no offense to those guys. They could be great coaches, but that just doesn't really fit the M.O. for what Arthur Blank was looking for when he fired Arthur Smith to catapult this new head coaching search. Maybe it changed his mind, but I'm inclined to believe that he fired Arthur Smith for a reason, and that reason has not changed. And so to hire a young, inexperienced head coach, I feel like you're right back to where you were two months ago. Now, let me toss this your way, because I've seen in the comment section a lot of support for Bobby Sloak. And he's, did, he's done and he did an amazing job in Houston as the offensive coordinator this past season. So if you had to pick a coach between Bill Belichick, six-time Super Bowl winning coach who over the last couple of years has flatlined and not in a good way in New England, or would you rather have a 36, 37-year-old, first-time OC Bobby Slowick? Like, if I'm Bill Belichick, I'm punching holes in a wall if I'm losing my job because Bobby Slowick, who's got no head coaching experience, is getting the gig over you. Like, that's the kind of stuff that Bill Belichick would then just go take the Saints job just so he can beat the Falcons 100-0 twice a year. Now, let's talk about the, the possibility of Bill Belichick bringing his own staff in because that appears to be a big hurdle for why the Falcons and the Belichick conversations have stalled over Terry Fontenot and Rich McKay maybe not uh, having the same type of role under a Belichick regime. Here's what Jeremy Fowler had to say on this conversation. And in talking to someone close to him, I don't get the sense he's trying to bulldoze a front office and make it his home. Belichick is capable of working with new people. But as was told to me, he needs certain familiar figures to make the Belichick way tick. That is where key figures such as Josh McDaniels, Joe Judge, and Scott Paoli enter the fray. Also a factor in it all, the Falcons value GM Terry Fontenot. I think what we might be seeing unfold here is Atlanta is using this as leverage, right? Belichick in his two interviews with the Falcons, the second one was much more of a, what would you do as head coach? Like, give us your plan, right? And in that interview, I'm sure that plan included, I want to bring these people in and I want to have this level of control over personnel decisions. And maybe Rich McKay and Arthur Blank came away from that meeting going, we like Terry Fontenot as a GM. We like his input for personnel decisions. He did a great job of repairing the defense last offseason. David Onyemata, Calais Campbell, Caden Ellis, Jesse Bates were all A signings in my book. So maybe the leverage Atlanta's trying to get here is we're going to flirt around. We're going to you know hop back on the dating apps, and we're going to look at some other coaches. And maybe Bill Belichick, who, by the way, is no one else is like no one else is talking to. There's no other interviews for Bill, Bill Belichick. Maybe the Falcons are trying to flirt with some other coaches so that Bill Belichick gives him a call back and he goes, All right, clearly, if I want to get to Don Shula's win record, the only place I can do it is in Atlanta because no one else has any interest in me, in me as a head coach, which 
is kind of a red flag, but whatever. And ultimately, I will budge on these personnel decisions. Don't go hire a Ben Johnson or a Mike Vrabel. Because the more I think about it, me and Colin were talking about this before we started filming. There's three vacancies. Atlanta, Seattle, Washington. There are four really good candidates. Ben Johnson, Mike Vrabel, Bill Belichick, and Bobby Slowick. So there's going to be an odd man out, which means if Dan Campbell, uh, Dan Campbell, if Dan Quinn goes to Seattle, which is very much expected, take them out of the mix. And so now you're down to Washington and Atlanta for Mike Vrabel, Bill Belichick, and Bobby Slowick. Like, one of those two teams is coming away, well, both teams are coming away with a great coach, and one of those three candidates is not going to get hired. So the Falcons are in a pretty good spot right now in terms of holding out and knowing there are still some really big fish left, and the pond is getting smaller and smaller. Okay, we have more to get to on this subject, so don't go anywhere. I do want to tell everyone about tell everyone though about our sponsor today, which is Prize Picks. Quick shout out to Prize Picks because thanks to Prize Picks, you can get with the easiest and most exciting daily fantasy sports service out there. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. So let me give you an example of what that looks like. Take the AFC Championship game. I like the more on Justin Tucker at one and a half field goals made. If he's going to line up, he's going to make it. And then I like the more on Travis Kelsey's receiving yards, 64 and a half. Patrick Mahomes, AFC Championship game. Who's the ball going to? Travis Kelsey or Sky Moore? Come on. Get, get serious here. So with quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types, Prize Picks is the number one daily fantasy sports app. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. I put that link in the comments and description of today's video. So check them out. That's Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Now let's switch gears and talk about the AFC and NFC Championship games this Sunday because the Falcons, and you should be watching this very closely as well, they have interviews set up after these games with Ben Johnson, Aaron Glenn, the OC, and the DC in Detroit. Obviously, Ben Johnson with this Lions offense has done a terrific job. And Aaron Glenn is not maybe jumping off the page for what his defense does numbers-wise, but in terms of character and culture installer and the way players play hard for him, there is a lot of respect league-wide for Aaron Glenn. Mike McDonald has done a really good job in a short amount of time as the Ravens DC. Now, this would be a early head coaching gig for him, similar to Bobby Sloak and even Ben Johnson a little bit. And then Anthony Weaver, he's been around the league for a much longer time than Johnson, Glenn, and McDonald. But when you look at the Baltimore Ravens every single year, they seem to find what appears to be old, washed-up defensive ends, and then they have career years at the age of 34, thanks to Anthony Weaver and the Ravens. Now, speaking of these guys and another kind of under-the-radar uh, candidate, if you will, here's what Jeremy Fowler had to say about Bobby Slowick. They are intrigued by Slowick, and they are still scheduled to talk with four assistants from championship games with Ravens assistants Mike McDonald and Anthony Weaver joining the two Lions coordinators you mentioned. It still feels like anything is possible here. So let's dive in a little bit deeper on the Bobby Slowick to the Falcons rumors. So he is interviewing with Atlanta right now, potentially, today at least, for a second time. And he is coming off his first season as an offensive coordinator with the Houston Texans. Before that, he started his coaching career off actually on the defensive side of the football before going to the San Francisco 49ers where his last job there was pass game coordinator. I would say Brock Purdy in his rookie year had a pretty good passing attack. Wouldn't you agree? Now, what's kind of interesting about Bobby Slowick is you might notice there's actually a gap in his career coaching history, right? He doesn't do anything from 2013 to 2017. How do you get back in the NFL after four years of being out of the NFL? He was a senior analyst at Pro Football Focus. So if you are looking for an analytics guy and a player or coach driven by numbers, Bobby Slowick is your guy. But then we got to acknowledge what C.J. Stroud did this season. And that's definitely going to catch a lot of attention because the Falcons need a new quarterback. 
And with the eighth overall pick, they may very well use it on a QB or use that pick to move up in the draft to get a QB. And if there's a candidate who has the shiniest resume for getting the most out of a rookie quarterback with a roster that's ready to win in Atlanta, Bobby Slook would likely be the man for the job. But we're making a lot of jumps that the Falcons are locked to draft a quarterback. We still have all of free agency to play out here. Now, I do kind of want to touch on this notion that always sweeps the nation every single January about, I want to hire the next young hotshot offensive coordinator. I want to get the next Sean McVay. I want to get the next Kyle Shanahan. It's great in theory. And it happens. But maybe not as often as people think. I looked back, and I didn't include 2023 because that just seems too recent. So I went back to 2022 to 2019. And I gave grades as to how these hires have held up since they were announced. Nathaniel Hackett, young, hot, you know, hot shot OC with the Packers with Aaron Rodgers. F grade. Mike McDaniel, I think, has done a great job in Miami. Give him an A. Kevin O'Connell and Brian Dable, really good first years, not so good second years. So year number three will be a much better tell as to whether or not the first or second year was a better reflection of them as a coach. But for now, I'll give him a B. Nick Sirianni is kind of an interesting one. No Eagles fan right now would give him an A, but I think making the playoffs three straight years probably gets you an A grade. Arthur Smith, I give it a C. Played 7-10 and ten, three straight years. There's worse out there. Go talk to Broncos fans about that with Hackett. Kevin Stefanski, I give a B plus. Really good first year, really good fourth season, but years two and three kind of lagged a little bit, so for me it's a tick below A-. minus. Cliff Kingsbury, C+. Plus. Matt LaFleur is an A grade. Zach Taylor, I give a B plus. So there are some good grades, don't get me wrong, but I feel like there is just this overwhelming uh, assumption made that, oh, you're a 38-year-old offensive coordinator with a really good team. Oh, you're going to make a great head coach. Doesn't always work out the way people think it will. So with that being said, I do want to wrap up the show by throwing a bit of a, a little bit of a curveball your guys' way. Because on yesterday's show, I asked you guys to name a random Falcon in the comment section. And that was a huge hit. We got so many replies. So today, I want to end the show with this. Name an all-time underappreciated Atlanta Falcon. Now we're going to see where the boys get separated from the men, right? Can we get some big polls here on some underappreciated Falcons? Don't go mainstream and don't go with the best players. But I do want to show some love to those of you that commented on our video yesterday. A couple of the random Falcons I noticed. Uh, I got Jay Teberg saying running back TJ Duckett. A couple of these guys were a little bit before my time. Steven's going with Mick Luckhurst, a kicker. I've got Thomas Payton with wide receiver Tony Martin. John's going with wide receiver Terrence Mathis. Daniel's going with DB Allen uh, Rosum. I've got Dax Peterson going with Ray Buchanan. I really liked, uh, where is it, uh, Snacko, DB Brent Grimes. I'm re-watching in a very slow pace the league, and Brent Grimes had like a 20-second cameo in it. And I was watching, I was like, is that, is that, is that Brent Grimes right there in a Falcons jersey doing a little uh, song and dance with Ruxin? So those are some random Falcons right there. I appreciate those of you guys that get in the comments section. It really helps the, the almighty YouTube algorithm out. So don't be afraid to get in the comments section and support us here. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so. That way we can get a live show this time next week.